hello everybody and welcome to another of our uh, Facebook live sessions. Today you join me and Elder, one of our barn owls here at the Trust, a beautiful native species of raptor. Um, and if you're very, very lucky, you can see quartering over the meadows right across the UK. Now hopefully you've been enjoying these sessions. I know that uh, you probably joined Gary a little bit earlier on in the week, uh, last week, uh, for his Tuesday tea time chat and uh, found out lots of very cool information about what he gets up to here at the Trust. And also last week my colleague Kat introducing you to Bo and her amazing ability of getting inside some of those eggs. What I'd like to be able to show you is some of a barn owl's ability. Now I've got here a little bit of enrichment for Elder, our barn owl, and this is kind of to try and simulate just a small part of the habitat that these birds would live in in the wild. Kind of dry, grassy meadow areas is perfect for a barn owl to hunt during the spring. And it's this sort of time in the wild that you would be expected to see barn owls out hunting quite a lot, even during the daytime. And I've had lots of people ask me whether it's okay to see a barn owl out during the daytime at this time of the year. Some people think they look a little bit lost. Not true at all. In fact, they're out hunting because they've got young chicks to feed. Now what I want to try and do is see whether we can show you an amazing ability that barn owls have and that is that even they are only very very small birds underneath all of those feathers they're absolutely tiny only weigh about 10 ounces in weight just a, a couple of hundred grams or so and yet they have an amazing power and strength when it comes to uh, pouncing down into the grass to catch their prey usually things like mice and voles um, so I'm going to call Elder back down, she's right above my head at the moment. Elder, you want to come down here? Put a little bit of food there for her. And we find barn owls right across the UK. As I say, it's wide open spaces really that they prefer for hunting. And as their name suggests, they like to live and nest in old buildings, old barns, uh, sometimes in an old hollow in a tree. And if you've been here at the Trust before, you would have had an opportunity, I'm sure, of seeing some of our barn owls flying uh, up in our woodland arena. They come out of the chapel, just as you might expect to see them out in the wild doing. I'm going to pop a little bit of food in here. Let's see. It's here. What I'd like you to do is come in and just show you this amazing pounce that they have down on their prey. Occasionally, these birds will hover for a moment before properly throwing their feet out <laughs> throwing their feet out and punching through the grass to capture their prey, to stun their prey, to kill it sometimes on impact. Now this is completely new to Elder. Before I brought her in here today, she'd never seen this before, and that's all part of what we're trying to do with our enrichment techniques. We're trying to give the birds an opportunity to do something a little bit differently. Food goes in again, she's had a little go, she knows that it's not dangerous at this point, something totally new. And as a bird team, we definitely find that it's the owls that can be the most tricky birds to try new things with. They're very, very much creatures of habit. So we try something new and sometimes they're a bit nervous of it or certainly a little bit suspicious of what we're trying to do. So it's all about trying to make them feel as comfortable and relaxed as possible. Let's try this again. Put you up here. Give you a little piece of food there, just to whet the appetite. I'm going to put a nice big piece of food in here this time. Nice large piece of chicken. She looks ready for it, as you can see. Food goes down. Now we've taken away one of the barn owl senses here in a way. She's relying on watching where the food goes. You can see the elder's got this beautiful big heart-shaped face. This facial disc actually allows the bird to track sound much, much better than we could. Her ears <laughs> I thought she was going to do it then. Uh, her ears perfectly hidden actually behind that stiff rim of feathers that she has. And within that holds the secret to the barn owl's success really when it comes to hunting and capturing their own food. I wonder, she's right above that, gives her a really nice vantage point. What if, let's move that grass a little bit, if I throw a little piece of food out here. You're pouncing on all sorts here, but you're not pouncing on the piece of food that I'd like you to. This is the wonderful thing about working with our birds. We try new things, some things work, some things don't, some things they want to get involved with, other things they completely ignore, but that's all part and parcel of the fun that we have working with our birds and really underpins everything that we're trying to do. We don't really want the birds to do anything they'd rather not do. 
we kind of offer them the opportunity to take part and get involved with enrichment. But if they can't really be bothered, to be honest, there's nothing me or any of the rest of the bird key team can do about that, really. Okay, Elder, last chance. You can sit here. She's quite beautifully, isn't she? Bit of food goes in there. Completely ignore it. Here it is. It's a nice big chunk this time. I did actually initially try with a couple of the other barn owls putting a few little insects in this grass in the hope that little rustles that the insects make would be enough to, for the barn owls to pinpoint where the prey was. It turned out they actually weren't too bothered about the insects and they would much rather do a little bit of flying around in here in our burrowing owl encounter area. Elder, what do you reckon? If you hop over here, every time you do that you get a little bit of food. Maybe that's the owl training me, who knows. Okay, I'm going to make this dead easy for you. I'm going to open it right up. I've got no excuse here. Ready? Burring owls next door. Make a little bit of scratchy noise. Just distracted her for a moment. moment there, did you see that tiny little hover? And we always think of kestrels when we think of hovering birds, but actually quite a few of our native British species can do it. And I'm sure if you've been out in the lovely weather that we were having last week, um, you might have seen some wild buzzards, kites, um, those birds that love that thermally sort of weather. And uh, we were actually well, really pleased to be able to see lots of wild birds of prey here at the Trust as well, but especially those buzzards uh, working and flying over uh, the local countryside and one thing they were doing in the little bit of nice breeze we had coming up the valley is kind of hovering really over the treetops and, uh, and over the hedgerows. You were so close that time Elder that I think um, I think we can probably do it. Who knows? I'm going to keep trying. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, thanks for all of your support on our Facebook page and on all our social media really. It means a great deal to us and uh, certainly fills us with huge amounts of encouragement when it comes to doing our job. So thank you so much, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll keep you posted on everything that's going on here at the Trust over the next few weeks and months.